as someone quoted, we need to travel to know different things in our life, especially to know ourselves. And someone is like here today with me, as we all love to travel and we love to gather different experiences. But there are very rare people who love to write about their experiences. So today I'm going to have a very special guest in my show. Hi everyone, this is RJ Alia and welcome to East Mojo. And today I'm going to have a entrepreneur, a philanthropist and an author and she is none other than Veravi Jani. Hi Veravi and welcome to our show. Hi Alia, what a wonderful introduction. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. So today we are going to discuss about your book Highway to Swadesh. Name itself is very interesting and uh, we will talk about it. But before that, my first question to you is that you know, writing a book is quite difficult. We need a lot of patience. We need a very strong mindset because uh, pen down everything that you experience with your eyes, with your body and there. And again, you need to pen down in a book. It's a very difficult thing to do. So tell me something about that. What's inspired you to write this book? Yeah, I've traveled so much across this country in the last two decades. And when I have traveled, uh, I have learned so much. And sometimes you want to share that with other people and initially I thought it would be blogs and articles and I've done that yeah. but it just always felt that something was missing that the full story was not being told we live in a beautifully vast country it's a land of a thousand stories and there are so many stories that need to be told uh, that need to be shared and I thought a book would do more justice than a blog and a, or an article always and uh, I was lucky um, my publisher, Harper Collins, uh, thought that the idea of the book was interesting. And just when the COVID lockdown was announced, I started writing the book. Wow, oh, that's that's really great. So you travel around 18,000 plus kilometers and it's like 24 states and one union territory. And taking everything together and writing in a book, uh, I think it need a you know, lot and lot of uh, courage to do that. I was in Jaisalmer, it was in the peak of summer and uh, there was a storm on the, on the, dis, you know, yeah. the sand dunes and uh, you know something like a moment of epiphany you know that night you know I want to share what I have learned and that was the first thing but I was very scared because you know it's a laborious process mm. and how do you put everything together and so at the end of the day I kind of went back and forth and then it was in the middle of a winter storm uh, while skiing in Gulmarg uh, that I penned down some first thoughts. Okay. But I was still not sure that mm. who would be interested in this kind of a story. And there was a performance, uh, a Kathakali performance in the backwaters of Kerala. It was a conviction in the eye of the artist and in the story that he was performing, which was a story from the Ramayan, uh, that I said, you know, if he can tell his story with such conviction, I too can find the courage. Finally, at the sacred grove in Moflong, when I was with some friends um, near Shillong, yeah. uh, they toured the forest and I sat down on the forest floor and wrote the first chapter of this book. Wow. That's, that's, that's one of my favorite places, the sacred is beautiful. forest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that place is really very sacred and I think that's where the idea comes Absolutely. out. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I can say we had a good start. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, moving on to my next question, you know, India is a vast country. We are, as we have already mentioned, you know, India is a beautiful country. We have different tribe, we have different culture, food, everything is different in different part of the. So how was your experience, you know, uh, going to different places, meeting different people, food, everything, the weather, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that you must have faced different kind of weathers during your travel. So tell me something about that. You know, we, we truly are a country which has like, 50 countries packed in, <laughs> in terms of food and yeah. weather and geography and culture and languages. So it was quite a revelation. I think more than anything else I learned about myself, because I think when you travel and you explore, you find that balance between what is familiar and comforting for you and what is new and what challenges your comfort zone. Right. And to exist between the comfort and the challenge of, you know, that comfort zone mm -hmm. sort of going away, right. you discover yourself. And I think when you travel and you explore, you are not just discovering what you are out there to see, but you also discover yourself. Yeah. 
that that that's true so my next question is based on this you know coming out of your comfort zone we have to experiment with ourselves a lot so what are your changes you know as a person as a person what are your changes after this book i think uh, the book itself uh, taught me uh, how collaborative writing processes because we always think that writing is a solitary yeah you know you we imagine a writer somewhere sitting <laughs> you know writing away it's not like that uh, there are a whole lot of people who are involved in the process their editors uh, their designers there are people who check things so i i discovered that it's such a wonderful collaborative process and i've enjoyed collaboration and that front i also think that it told me that i could finally take things slow no i come from my my business is in logistics where time is yeah, everything yeah it's very important <laughs> and this had like a stretch timeline so for the first time i could exist in in a in a frame about something that i was doing that had a stretch timeline and it taught me to sit with myself which i hadn't done in many many years i think since childhood and that's why we always said that when we travel we always rediscover ourselves right yes. <laughs> so moving on to my next question northeast as we all said it's a paradise so we have so many states out here the food the culture the people everything is very beautiful but of course we have our own challenges and uh, what are your challenges you know traveling through northeast and what is your biggest takeaway i think what i would like to first say is that I haven't found northeast to be as challenging and difficult as many people make it out to be. Uh I've always found a lot of love, warmth and I have been welcomed here always. Which I think uh for someone like me who comes from absolutely opposite end of the country has been truly phenomenal. I think where we could do more is to bring more awareness about the beaches. Because what you know, you explore. What you explore, you share. and i as i said i was fortunate working with younger people entrepreneurs friends got me to northeast for last now 15 years yeah. and so i i consider myself truly privileged to be able to uh, witness and understand uh, the different cultures the tribes the ways of life uh, what is challenging what is not what is aspirational where are the opportunities all of it but i think we need to talk more and in fact that's the reason earlier in the book i was very particular i was very conscious that um, that stories about people from northeast about places from northeast food from northeast features in the book because i've always found that missing in many books on india True. uh this this beautiful heart uh you know the paradise that we have and its stories and I think the people of Northeast deserve a rightful place in India's story, and this is my attempt at it. Thank you, thank you so much. So I'm sure the people are super excited to read this book. You know, there are so many things about our Northeast in this book, right? So, and of course, your different travel stories, your entire journey. So, uh, as one question that we all are accustomed to our city lives. we are all are accustomed to the comfort that we have in our houses, the food. You know, you order something, you'll get it instantly. But while traveling. we don't get all these things you don't know what kind of weather you will get or what kind of food you will get or what kind of a people you will meet so moving from a city life to these kind of a life or a a life which is maybe a little isolated maybe sometimes very challenging during travel or uh, maybe you know uh, moving to interiors so how's your experience today and how you uh, change yourself or transit yourself to different phases you know i think my my first question is why must we choose yeah we can all travel we can all live in cities and we can all live in remote areas i do all the three i live in delhi and cr uh, i grew up in mumbai i travel a lot and now i spend almost half the year in a small village in uttarakhand in the himalayas and so i think we can do all of it why must we choose yeah that's true so I'm, now i'm going to ask you a very difficult question During your entire journey, which is your favorite place apart from Northeast? Oh gosh, I have no favorite place. Please don't ask me to pick that. It is That's why I said it's a very difficult question. No, no, it is definitely not possible. I have really no favorites. In fact, uh, that was something that the publishers asked, and they said, "Would you want to include photos, or would you want one photo for the cover?" And I said, "How do I pick? You're asking me to pick between what is all mine." Yeah, and it's very, very hard. So <laughs> I, I actually don't have a, a one favorite. um but as i said uh because of so much of work that i have done here 
and the the enchanting landscape and society that we that we have here in this part of the country the book is a little partial towards the region <laughs> that's why i said the, apart from norcus which is your yeah. favorite place but uh, tell me something about the food and the people that you have met during your entire journey all kinds of food i mean i'm a vegetarian so i'm a bit challenged in the department <laughs> and i still remember we were in this uh, little uh, in fake district in nagaland uh, we were in at the home of a local tribe headsman and they had nothing vegetarian to give me so they went and got a maggi and cut some onions in it and put it and gave me some jalo with it and i loved it i think i think uh, what it teaches you is uh, that our ability to uh, you know change variations india's food plate is so diverse not just in taste but it also in the ingredients we use in the manner in which we cook um that i i really hope we never lose that diversity about our food um and and don't go the west way where you know there is this one thing and you know there that's how the food becomes monotonous i really hope we never ever get there because that's that's so we uh, that that customization in our food is just so india i hope we never ever lose it <laughs> true and hospitality is in our blood indians have that in their blood yeah. so tell me something about that experience with different people across the country you know one thing uh, a lot of people say that it's uh, it's hard uh, to travel across yeah. uh, but i will tell you again a story we were on this drive and we were driving from imphal to kohima okay and we saw this uh, caucasian man uh, you know with a cap and mm -hmm. a blue jacket walking and uh, we stopped there was a guy <laughs> <laughs> walking and his name was cedric and he was french and he was walking from singapore to france okay and so we said wow so where have you you know he said no i walk 40 kilometers every day and i've just entered you know a couple of days back india through the more post yes. from myanmar into manipur and we said you know, did you notice any change and he said yes here everybody is welcoming everybody is helpful i suddenly feel i am home and i think to me that's a very important thing from somebody who's foreign right. who sort of says that oh i've been walking and i suddenly feel that i've now come to a very friendly and warm place and i found that friendliness that warmth that ability to talk to strangers welcome them in their homes everywhere across the country no you know nobody shuts the door on you uh, in fact they'll get you in they'll say okay come have tea where are you going if you're lost they'll help you they'll send their children to drop you till the next post <laughs> I don't think I've traveled a lot around the world. This doesn't exist in any part of the world, and I think we should be very proud of it. Of course, we should be. So, uh, uh, go, coming back to our different question now, highway to Swadesh. The name itself is like you know you're connecting with your own country, and when we talk about our country, it's a different feeling altogether. We cannot express that in our words, right? So, tell me something about this name. What is the story behind this name? So, the story behind the name was, of course, that we were going on this drive. and a dear friend uh, asked saying so what are you going to call it and we hadn't thought of a name uh, and so you know he kind of said look uh, since you're going and exploring country what about swades we said yeah and he said you know this movie highway had just released that time and he said why don't we quite into call it highway to swades and the name stuck and the name stuck with the journey and because on the journey i had three wonderful friends from uh, tamil nadu who were with me on that journey one of them passed away AG Uma Mahesh and he was the first person actually to suggest that I write the book and so I wanted to use the same title uh in loving memory of AG <laughs> that that that's really lovely so uh being a woman what are the challenges that you have faced during the journey you toilets know? i i really <laughs> think if we fix the public toilet problem in this country we'll find many more women traveling many more women working uh and i think that's something that we should focus on the petrol pumps do have toilets but apart from maybe a few states most states the petrol pump toilets for women because they use so less they remain defunct and dirty and i think that's not uh you know something that we should definitely address it but apart from that you know sometimes read stories and of course in our media western media it's getting unsafe for women yeah yeah that that's Things what like i'm that. supposed to ask you yeah. but i didn't feel unsafe Uh, everywhere i went i felt welcome i felt safe and i felt uh, nobody 
Eve teased me. Nobody touched me. Nobody insulted me. Nobody abused me. Um, but I, I, and I do know that these incidents happen. But as a traveler, I didn't face them. In fact, because sometimes there was a woman along with the three men, <laughs> the house doors would open faster because they found it easier to trust a woman yeah. uh, than a bunch of men travelers. So I, I think there were advantages. Um, Definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like, there's a transition in your life, you know, you're an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and now you're an author. So, how did you, you know, take this transition? To me, uh, none of them are disconnected. Because when you are, who's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a problem solver. Yeah. To solve problems, you have to gather information, you have to constantly upgrade yourself. That can only happen if you read, write and travel. So that's part of the process. When you read, write and travel, uh, then you are also able to uh, create something, create a shared value, uh, which you can then therefore share with other people. So I think all of these are kind of interconnected. I don't choose between them. Yeah. I kind of live out all of them and I hope I can do more uh, than less. So writing is just for me a means to share my story, share the story of this country with so many people. And uh, maybe tomorrow there's another form to share it and yeah. one will explore that as well. But I think I don't choose between the two. There isn't like different phases of life and now this is the next stage. This is just one more stage, <laughs> one more part of my life. Definitely. And uh, we love that part, actually. <laughs> so, uh, where we, this is a very personal question to you. We love to do shopping. And India is one place you go to any state, you go to any place, you'll get something to buy. You know, it's, it's full of colors, you know, different things are there. So, tell me something about that experience. Did you buy something or, you know, that uh, soul, you know, Atma Jaak Jati hai, shopping karne ki. <laughs> so, how was the experience on that? So, I am not such a big <laughs> shopper. I will give that disclaimer, but... I think uh, on that drive, it was very hard to, of course, shop things. Yeah. You, you know, you are yeah. constantly on the road. We're driving on an average 354 kilometers every day. Uh, but I make it a point whenever time does permit and if I am somewhere, I'd like to always buy things which are uh, from local artisans, yes. uh, local crafts. India has so many of us. I mean, the unofficial figure of the number of artisans in the country is up to 200 million. That's a lot of people. And I think we don't, uh, sometimes, you know, I see friends, they will go and see a, get a Venetian glass and it's all nice. But sometimes you should go to Faisabad also and pick up some glass. Uh, they also make excellent glass yes. works over there. So I think uh, I like to do that. I like to actually buy things that are local yes. and that are handcrafted by sometimes women, sometimes yeah, local yeah. communities. And it kind of is a piece of uh, the country then in your home and uh, or, or in your wardrobe, which I think is just fantastic. All right. So before we uh, wind up our conversations, I have uh, two questions for you. The first, the highway to Swadesh was the biggest takeaway from this book because you have spent 51 days on roads. I think the biggest uh, takeaway is that we sometimes are always running after what we don't know, uh, which is that we want to know other people. We want to know you know, hi, I'm an entrepreneur, Alia, how does, what does an RG do? I'm so much more interested in you. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in another country, in another time, and that's great. But sometimes we should also be interested in ourselves. True. We should explore our own self and explore our country, explore our people. Because only when we know ourselves better, that our ability to understand and comprehend the world significantly improves. True, very true. And last, words from you to the people who are watching us because Highway to Sadesh, I'm sure it's a very special book to you. It's very close to your heart. So a very special mes message to all the people who are watching you. Please read it and tell me what you think of it. And I hope you too will travel and uh, make your own stories and tell your own stories. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm going to read this book and you're going to send me a signed copy Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. That's a promise. It's a promise. <laughs> So thank you so much, Verbi, for joining us. And uh, we are really happy and privileged that you are part of this. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very, very much. And to all of you here at East Mojo, and especially to you, Alia, it's thank been you. wonderful talking to you today. Same here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, viewers, that's a wind up to this conversation. But highway to Swadesh that you have to buy. Read this book and send your personal note to Verbi, right? <laughs> so thank you so much. This is RJ Alessani from this exclusive conversation. Keep watching East Mojo. 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.